Good morning again. Yesterday we made a start in looking at the wonderful phrases that we find in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, but only got as far as considering Father. Today I'd like to expand that to the first half of that verse, Our Father in Heaven. And this phrase is both a comfort and a contrast. It comforts us with the reminder of the loving nature of God as a father devoted to his children, children who may call him Abba, Father, the word that carries the total trust that a child has in a loving father. But he's also Father in heaven, so far above us, so infinitely greater than our earthbound minds can comprehend. Our worship songs today often remind us of his closeness, quite likely. But we need, as we pray, also to remember his sovereignty. An old, ha an old hymn, somewhat out, out of fashion today, has it thus. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. And it goes on, great father of glory, pure father of light, your angels adore you, all veiling their sight. And this brings to mind Isaiah's great vision in chapter six of his prophecy. Yet the wonder is that this heavenly God wishes us to pray to him by his Holy Spirit enables us to do just that. This is our Father in heaven. And now there's just one word in this final phrase that we haven't thought about. Our Father in heaven. And I need to be just a little careful here. Jesus was, decided, was teaching his disciples, a group, so obviously he would use plural pronouns. It wouldn't have made as much sense speaking to a group to instruct them to pray, my Father in heaven. But there's another way we can look at it. To pray our Father reminds us of our church family. We share our faith with all who pray this prayer because he is the father of all believers. And that draws us to think wider still of brothers and sisters throughout the world, many of them in bitter situations, many suffering simply because they insist on praying our Father in heaven. So, although much of this prayer, especially in the second half, draws us into our own individual situation, and needs and Christian walk, at its start, I believe it can remind us of our sisters and brothers across the globe, and so encourage us to thank God for them. How often in our church we have welcomed Christians from other continents, rejoicing in their fellowship and benefiting from their faith and experience. So, as we start this prayer for ourselves, I think it's good to remember the bonds that link us with other Christians, wherever they are, and to thank God that he has joined and continues to join us with them, as together we pray, Our Father in Heaven. So we pray, Blessed Lord, who caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the joyful hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.